um, you know, Final Fantasy, a 25-year-long series, um, and one one defining pillar of it has been the music. You know, f fans have fallen in love with the music just as much as they fall in love with the games. Um, and there's so many, you know, each any person who's a fan of Final Fantasy can name their favorite track from a particular game or a particular moment. And we kind of wanted to engulf that into a game where it kind of celebrates um, the franchise. Uh, this being the 25th anniversary of it, um, we just felt like it was a, a great time to just do this and, you know, take deviate kind of from the, from the typical RPG um, and make just a pure um, Final Fantasy rhythm game. Um, but even within that, there's actually a big RPG element behind it. Um, you actually have a party system. Each, all the characters have stats, they have abilities, you collect items, you actually um, have summons, you have, um, you know, special abilities that only certain characters have. You have the whole range of the protagonists from 1 through 13 to, um, let's see, let me go back to the edit party. At first, when you start the game, you have all the uh, main characters from 1 through 13 available to you. Um, you can form your party in any way you want. And obviously, some characters are going to have better affinities for, for speed, some are going to be better for attack, some are going to be better for, for magic. They all play into the way you perform, you perform in the three different uh, music stages. Um, but as you keep playing, you'll notice that there are unlockable characters. Um, and they include some fan favorites. So there's a lot of um, replay value included in it. It's so it kind of feels like a true Final Fantasy game where there's a lot to unlock. There's a lot to to do. It's not just playing the game through once, but it's really going back and diving in deep to the system and unlocking everything. But at the heart of it is um, a music game, and it's really it, it. There's three different music stages we'd like to show you. But um, do you guys have a track off the bat that you want to see? Is there a particular FF that you have an affinity um, towards? Do you have a track for? Uh, uh, Final Fantasy VII, I forget exactly which one it was. It was for the track. Yes, the bombing mission. The bombing mission is not in the, this game. We have One Wing Angel, we have the main theme, and we have uh, Eret's theme. Basically, it's three tracks from each uh, title, but as you play, you'll unlock a little bit more. Um, so there's about over 70 total in the whole game, um, and then not, not counting DLC, so... Okay, I noticed that each one of those has uh, like a different color code. It has like difficulty level. It's actually for the different music stage. Um, you have a battle stage, a field stage, and a event stage, and they actually are different in the way they play. So let me just go ahead and show you. Um, I'm sure you guys all know one of the angels. So. Oh yeah, one of the angels standing by on the station. <laughs> So songs like Dancing Mad and possibly Bombing Mission will eventually be in the game? There are a lot of DLC which we haven't um, announced quite yet, but there are a lot of songs that, um, you know, most people consider their, their favorites or ones that have been kind of um, always been redone. Like whenever we do remix albums, they've always been included. So mm -hmm. we have a great kind of library. This is, if there's any, you know, game that encompasses the entire music, you know, of, um, scope of the franchise, this game is it. Do the, um, the colors matter? Um, it actually just, it makes it easier to, uh, to turn, figure out which, what kind of, uh, movement you're doing. So reds are taps, greens okay. are holds, and yellows are just quick swipes. Uh, okay. And the arrows show which way you're supposed exactly. to Exactly. Okay. Now, when you're in blue, you have an opportunity to do a summon attack. Mm -hmm. If you do everything perfectly or well during this blue stage, you'll actually be able to summon in, uh, an idol. And in this case, we got Ifrit. And then you'll be prompted with the series here. And they'll do their signature attack. Basically, the more enemies you kill, uh, the more will rotate in. And the more you get through, um, the more experience you get, the better items you'll get um, as drops. I 
always get in trouble when you do that. Yeah. <laughs> Another cool thing is that all the characters, all the monsters, they've been given this really cute, kind of stylish makeover. Mm. So you see Safer Sephiroth there, but um, you'll notice most of the monsters you see are ones that you've seen throughout the series, and they kind of you can instantly recognize them. But they're given this kind of cute, you know, really highly designed and um, super deformed style that uh, really does kind of touch that nostalgic tone. So each time we finish the song, uh, you'll get experience points, your characters may level up, they may learn new abilities. You'll get a couple items as drops. And you'll gain Rhythmia, and Rhythmia is kind of a... Um, the easiest way to put it is kind of a general score tracker. Um, as, you on, on, as you reach certain milestones, you'll unlock... Um, Things in the museum. Maybe you'll get you'll get at songs added to your music player. You'll get songs added to your theater. Um, and there's it, there's a chart kind of. It's like you know, first you get a hundred, then it's one fifty, then it's two hundred. The higher you go, the harder it is to hit those milestones. But each time you do, you'll get something in return. Um, and that was in battle music stage. So let me go ahead and show you a field music stage. One of my favorites. We'll go with Terrace theme from Six. Oh, the, with the Opera House. Opera House, um, that's part of Celis' theme for the event stage. Okay. So in this one, you have to follow the movements that are on the screen. Um, in the battle music stage, it didn't matter which row the, the notes were coming at, mm. but in this one, it actually does matter where, where on the, uh, the touch screen you're actually interacting with. Mm. Now for these stages, um, you're going to be you're going to start as the leader of your party. But if you miss uh, a note and your character stumbles, then the next character will just step in until you run out of uh, the group's HP that you see at the top right. Mm -hmm. And uh, in these field music stages, um, the character speed is the best uh, kind of. Speed and luck uh, actually play in part most. Uh, speed basically helps you traverse as far as you can. Mm. So you know that I just tripped, so my second character just switched in. And like the battle, there's going to be this feature zone in blue. Uh, for the field, if I do it correctly, I will summon a, a chocobo. And he'll actually traverse farther than any of the characters because they're, they're faster. And basically, the, the farther you travel in these field music stages, the better chance you have of getting good at it at the end. And luck also plays into part, um, the higher, luck you, the, higher the, the luck stat you have on your character at the time, uh, the more you'll have an ability, the opportunity to encounter a Moogle during, your, uh, during the stage. And the Moogles will always, oh, sure, I got one. They'll always give you some kind of item. If you go far enough, you'll be able to. You'll be greeted by a character, but we didn't get far enough. So mm. uh, usually, there's a character from that game waiting. Um, usually, sub character uh, for this particular game. Um, Locke is one of the sub characters from Six, so he'll kind of be at the very end and he'll give you a special item that if you were able to reach him. Mm. And you got S rank and you wasn't far enough. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it. It kind of depends on how many criticals you get versus how many greats and goods and misses you get, um, and it kind of balances out um, S being the highest rank, and then A, B, C, and then obviously if you don't beat it, you'll probably still get a D, depending on how far you get. So earlier you mentioned the unlocks. Uh, give us any hints about what characters we could look forward to? Uh, I could give you just a couple. Um, BB's in there, Locke's in there, uh, Yuna's in there. Uh, let's see. I'll give you one more. Uh, Sephiroth is in there. Oh, you can play a Sephiroth too. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. So let me give you a uh, event music stage. You mentioned the opera theme, so I'll give you uh, a little bit of that. And you have basically three difficulty levels: basic, expert, and um, ultimate, I believe. Um, we're playing on expert right now. It's 
once you've played through the uh, the basic, you, it kind of uh, it's a little bit more challenging. But ultimate is um, ridiculously hard. So most of the time, you'll fail your first attempt at any of the songs. So in the event stage, you're basically just following, timing uh, your triggers to the top screen. And if you can watch, then you'll be greeted with kind of the event scenes from the game. That's definitely going to go in for the old, the old school Final Fantasy mm -hmm. people too. Yeah, I mean, what we like about this game is that it's really accessible to not just FF fans, but to rhythm game fans, you know, it's, it yeah. is kind of a, a different rhythm game than the typical kind where you're just doing the same thing throughout the whole, you know, game. It varies it up with the three different stages, um, and it just gives you a lot more to do with kind of the parties and the different characters that you can unlock. stage the feature zone if you do it correctly you'll actually extend uh, the play a little bit You'll get different bonuses um, if every time you finish a song. Suppose you have an all male party, you'll get an all male bonus. You have an all female party, you get an all female bonus. Uh, if you play a song that um, is from one of the characters in your party, you'll get a, a party or uh, a character bonus from because you played a song from that game. So you'll get all different kinds of bonuses, um, and they all just help you accumulate uh, the rhythmia. And obviously, the more you get, uh, the different things you unlock. So. So, title character bonus, we had Tear on the Party, and we played a song from Six, so we got that one. I'm not normally a portable gamer, but this one might actually do it for me. It's yep. very yeah. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to hear. I saw it um, previously because I'm not an Asian music DJ for the radio station, mm -hmm. so. I do yeah. new tweets every week about all the new stuff that goes um, It really interests me, not being just a Final Fantasy um, fan, but mm. incorporating the rhythm to it is a very awesome idea. Yeah, I mean, at the end of it, once you initially get past the, the, the shock that there's a Final Fantasy rhythm oh, game, like, it, it's a no-brainer, <laughs> you know? Mm. Like, music has been a biggest a big part of uh, the series and being able to play the music you know it, it changes the whole appreciation for it and the if especially if you played any of these and have you know like I have memories from playing six you know, back in the day so I first jumped to six when I started playing the game so it really does kind of give you that feel from bring you back to how you felt when you were playing the game and I think it's just a, a great package for FF fans alike and also just rhythm game rhythm game fans. Alright, you mentioned that it was going to be from Final Fantasy 1 all the way up to 13. Mm -hmm. Does that include uh, the online on 11? 11 is included in this. Yep, uh, 11 is right here. Awesome. Yeah. Because, okay, the graphics weren't the greatest to find that time the, the game came out, but the music was awesome. Mm -hmm. And then everybody loved that part of the game. Just like you said, Final Fantasy is defined by its music. Right. Yeah, Eleven was, um, most of it was composed by uh, Nobuo Uematsu, who is kind of the, the long-standing main mm -hmm. composer for the series, so, yeah, I mean, Eleven does strike a chord um, in terms of music for a lot of fans who've played, and been fans of Eleven. Yeah, um, any of you guys want to give it a shot? No, no, no. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like I said, I, I'm a white man, I have no rhythm. It's it's not that bad. I mean, it's it's not a rock band where you have to play an instrument or anything. You know, you just have to make get used to the tapping and yeah. 
I mean, the ultimate mode is ridiculously hard, but the basic mode, you know, it's really simple, straightforward, so. Yeah. This definitely looks like one of those games you could obsess over for hours and hours and try to get to the ultimate mode. Uh -huh. Yeah, the great thing about it, really, is that you can just pick up and play a couple songs if you want to, um, but you could, I mean, I've sat there playing for, like, hours at a time, just playing the same song over and over to get better scores, and mm. so it really does... You know, it really does define the pick up and play aspect of it. You could just pick up and play for a couple minutes or a couple hours, and I think if you even if you pick it up for a couple minutes, you're gonna lose track of time and <laughs> end up playing for a few hours. Yeah, I mean, it's it's great. The songs are long enough to to feel worthwhile, yet they're not too long. They're not too short. They're kind mm. of the perfect length. Um, but yeah, it's just it's a fun game. I mean, it's really what it comes down to is that it's just really fun. Mm. Alright, well, thanks for showing us this. Thank you. I really appreciate it.